So, this is definitely a video I never thought I would be making. Um, this is not clickbait. If you follow me on Instagram, I already kind of mentioned a little bit about this a couple days ago. Uh, but I wanted to make a video to kind of tell the full story of like how this happened and everything. Um, but yeah, on October 27th of this year, which at the time of recording this is about a week and a half ago, uh, I was diagnosed with gastroesophageal cancer. And as far as the, uh, as far as the type and the stage goes, um, I'm still going through tests to figure that out. I had, <laughs> I've been going to doctors like every single day. I kind of feel like a science experiment, but um, I'll get into that in a minute. To kind of, to kind of tell this whole story, I have to go, honestly, all the way back to when I was born, basically. I've had acid reflux disease my entire life. Uh, when I was born, I had a, a hole in my stomach, and I, I may be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure the hole was just my, basically where your esophagus connects to your stomach and like opens and closes to keep food down, uh, that has, doesn't work on my body. So it's just always open. And obviously I don't remember any of this, but just from stories that I've been told from my parents, um, shortly after I was born, I, I couldn't keep anything down. Every time I was fed, it would just immediately come back up. And uh, they ended up taking me to the hospital because I was severely underweight. And I was actually even labeled as a uh, failure to thrive at one point, uh, just because I was so underweight and had like malnutrition. From what I have heard, the doctors told my parents that, you know, over time, it would uh it would get better gravity would help keep everything down once i started walking um and so for 28 years that's kind of what happened uh for as long as i can remember i've had i've like dealt with acid reflux uh you know laying in bed at night trying to go to sleep and having really bad heartburn but it's always been manageable you know i could just I could eat a few tums or take Pepto-Bismol and it was, it was fine. So I never really thought too much of it. Uh, well, as it turns out, suffering from acid reflux disease is a major risk factor for esophageal cancer. And so 28 years of untreated acid reflux disease didn't do great for my body. And, uh, so what ended up happening was uh, a few months ago, I guess it was, it was around like the beginning of September, um, I started having some really bad chest pains. Um, I actually remember the first day that it happened, Emily and I were eating Zaxby's. We were preparing for the hurricane that was going to come. We were out like buying supplies and we had stopped at Zaxby's and, uh, while I was eating, I suddenly got this horrible, like the most painful thing that I've ever felt like right here in my chest. And it lasted for like about five minutes. And I knew it didn't feel like the normal like heartburn, but I figured, you know, that that must be what it is. And so the next morning I remember waking up and it still hurt. Like it was not as bad, but it was just kind of like this really dull pain. The best way I can describe it is it felt like a rock, like sitting in my chest. It was a very strange feeling. So some time goes by and I'm thinking like, you know, this is just acid reflux. I was taking, uh, taking Tums, Pepto. I went to the store and bought like all this Pepsid stuff, you know, just trying to get it under control and it just, it wouldn't stop. Some, some days the chest pain would just be like a very, minimal, you know, like, like I said, like a rock sitting in my chest, but then other times it would get worse and worse. So eventually I made an appointment to go see a uh, GI doctor. 
this was, I guess, towards the end of September. So I went and saw a GI doctor and I explained all this stuff to him. I uh, told him that I had had, you know, acid reflux my entire life. It was untreated and everything. So he prescribed me a medicine to try and uh, get the reflux under control. And when I asked him what the chest pain was, he said more than likely it was just my esophagus was really inflamed and swollen. Just And uh, so that was, you know, causing the irritation. And then he scheduled an endoscopy for almost a month later on October 24th. So for the next month, uh, I was taking this medicine. It wasn't really helping. Uh, the chest pain was getting worse and worse. And it started getting to the point where uh, anytime I would eat, I could like, I could feel it going down. And as soon as the food got to that point right here in the center of my chest, it was just excruciating pain. And I remember one night, Emily and I, we were eating uh, spaghetti. And other than the Zaxby's, the first time it happened, that was the worst pain that I've had, was eating spaghetti. Uh, and it was at that point that I started thinking, like, okay, something is, something is wrong. Acid reflux does not cause this. And an irritated esophagus, I don't think, would either. But thanks to the American healthcare system, I had to wait a whole month until October 24th for the endoscopy. And for those who don't know, an endoscopy is basically when they stick a camera, like they stick a tube down your throat with a camera so that they can see uh, your esophagus and see what's going on. Um, I was put to sleep for it. And before I was put under, I got to talk to the doctor and explain to him like, you know, this is getting worse and worse and it's getting hard to eat. And I remember seeing a look of concern in his face whenever I told him the part about not being able to eat and having a hard time swallowing. And uh, so they did the procedure, and whenever I woke up, they informed us that they had found a 9 centimeter tumor uh, right where my esophagus connects to my stomach. And 9 centimeters is not small. It's, uh, it converts to like three and a half inches, so pretty significant sized tumor. And like that immediately made sense. The reason why it hurt to swallow food is because it was having to like force its way past this thing blocking the entrance to my stomach. Um, so I asked him, do you think it's cancer? And he said, I don't know, we have to have more tests done. So they did a biopsy and scheduled me for a follow-up um, ultrasound for a few days later on the 27th. So the 27th comes, um, I go in, and before they even do the test, that's when they give us the news that the biopsy came back positive and that it was cancer. Um, so they went ahead and did the ultrasound which the ultrasound basically just got them, just let them have, get like a better look at it. And then after that ultrasound, then they uh, scheduled me for a CT scan so that they could like check everything. And um, so that CT scan was done on the 30th, the day before Halloween. And uh, they told me that obviously they found, they could see the tumor uh, but they also found a spot on my liver. Just judging by that test, there was no way to to know if it had spread to my liver uh, or if that spot was just something else. Uh, so, <laughs> ever since the 27th, I have been going to doctors literally every single day, um, having more and more tests done. That CT scan was on the 30th. On Halloween, I went and met with an oncologist, which is uh, just a cancer specialist. And uh, we were there for a very long time. And the long story short version of it is, as far as the type and the staging goes, they couldn't know that until um, more tests were done. But it looked like one of two scenarios. If it turns out that it hasn't spread to my liver, 
then it would be considered stage three, which is obviously like the best case scenario here. And if that's the case, I would have about six months of chemotherapy as well as uh, radiation therapy to try and shrink the tumor to get it small enough to be surgically removed. So that's best case scenario. Worst case scenario is the spot that showed up on my liver is related, showing that it has spread. And if that's the case, then it'll be considered inoperable and uh, they won't do the radiation therapy, but they will do the chemotherapy. So then, let's see, the next day after that, I met with a surgeon who would actually be doing the surgery and um, he kind of explained how that would work if it ends up happening and then also explained how the chemotherapy is going to work and for that um, I'm actually going to be having this thing called a port that's going to be implanted in my chest like right around here and it's like really gross to think about it was making me really squeamish when he was explaining it but uh, basically it's this little thing that goes underneath your chest with a, uh, a tube that gets permanently inserted into one of your arteries that go like straight to your heart. And then on the outside there will be just a little spot where when I go for chemotherapy sessions they have this little piece that like connects to it to inject the chemotherapy drugs directly into my chest which will go straight to my heart rather than having to have it like going through an IV in your arm. And uh, so he explained all that. Again, he said it depended on what the uh, the rest of the test results show on whether like how this is all gonna happen. So the past two days, Monday and Tuesday, Monday I had an MRI scan done. Yesterday I had a PET scan done, which the PET scan, by the way, it was crazy. They had to inject me with like this radioactive liquid and I had to be quarantined for a while. I had to sit in a room by myself with like a big radiation sign on the front door so that nobody could enter for about 45 minutes. And then they did the test, they did the scan, and then after the scan was over, they told me, uh, for the next 24 hours you have to stay away from small children and pregnant women. <laughs> so I was like, I was, I was poisonous for a while. At this point, I'm recording this video on Wednesday, so at this point, I'm sure it's all worn off by now, but that was kind of weird. I was, I was actually poisonous for a while. So that brings us to uh, today. Today I have an appointment in a couple hours to go meet with um, the radiation doctor about how that's all gonna work. Tomorrow I have the thing implanted in my chest, and then Friday I meet with my oncologist again. And that's when he will give us the final results, the final uh, staging, and the uh, the treatment plan. So, yeah, it's uh, it's been a crazy couple weeks. <laughs> this uh, it all just like came out of nowhere too. But I'm I'm staying I'm staying positive. Obviously, this was probably the worst time of year that I could have found this out. Because, uh, obviously, with Halloween being, you know, such a big time, it was a little bit hard to pretend like nothing was happening and have fun on Halloween, but we still managed. Um, in fact, I have so many videos that I recorded and I just have not been able to sit down and edit them, either because I'm not feeling good uh, or just distracted with uh, everything that's going on. I, I, I recorded uh, us driving around looking at other people's Halloween decorations the day before Halloween. Uh, I want to get that posted. And then I vlogged a little bit on Halloween. We had a very like low-key Halloween. We just stayed home, but it was still fun. And uh, I want to sit down and put all that together. It's just with all these doctor's appointments and everything, it's been, I just haven't had time to, to do that. But like I said, I'm, I'm staying positive. You know, I'm, I'm hoping for the best. 
but I'm preparing for the worst. If it does turn out to be the worst case stage four scenario, um, I don't know exactly yet what's going to happen. I do know that regardless, um, I'm having chemotherapy. Um, it's just a matter of, I guess, how long and how strong. And that's actually another thing. They, they did say that the particular type of cancer I have is extremely rare in people my age. I'm only 28. And while it is, uh, more common in men, it's really only common for men like 65, 70 or older. But they did say that like silver lining, I guess, is because I'm only 28, they can potentially be a lot more aggressive with the chemotherapy than they could otherwise with, you know, someone who was 70. But yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm not going to stop making videos or anything. I'm, in fact, before all this happened, I had like a whole plan. I was going to like reboot my YouTube channel, sort of. I, I had like all these plans. Obviously, I've had to put all that aside. But it is still something that I want to do as soon as I can, as soon as I have the time to do it. Uh, I'm not quitting. This isn't like a goodbye video or anything. Uh, it's just like to keep you guys in the loop, I guess, and let you know what's going on. And so that in a few weeks or months, whenever all of a sudden I no longer have hair, so that you understand why. <laughs> My camera died as soon as I said that last line uh, because I'm a professional YouTuber. I've been doing this for over 10 years. But in any case, uh, that's where we're at. We're waiting for these test results. And as soon as I know more, I will let you guys know more. And uh, like I said, I posted this on Instagram a few days ago. So if you're not following me on Instagram, uh, head over there and I'll probably post some more updates on there quicker than I will be able to on here. So, yeah. Fun times. One last thing, though, I can honestly say that this has been the scariest Halloween of my entire life. <clears throat> but, yeah. So, as always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.